All right, as I was talking about, that we, we uh, in the very first time we knew about the Van Allen belts, uh, well, we, we proposed Van Allen, this guy Van Allen actually proposed it, and uh, in the 1960s, we sent out the, the Explorer 1 spacecraft, the first spacecraft launched by, um, by the United States, and indeed, we discovered the Van Allen belts, um, that, that, that they are really there. Uh, now, now here's so here's what happens with the um, you know you have these charged particles that come from the sun all the time, mostly electrons and protons, um, and what happens to charged particles when charged particles encounter a magnetic field? This is well known in physics. Um, they will spiral around the the magnetic field lines, and what happens is uh, they'll spiral um, towards the north pole and towards the south pole. And um, what what you what you have, and, and of course, you know the the these charged particles get trapped in the Van Allen belts, and they they bounce back and forth. Um, but th this is just a two dimensional view of this, by the way. That the Van Allen belts surround the Earth. Um, there's two major ones. Uh, as I said, we, you know we know exactly where these are, and when when. Um, astronauts pass through the Van Allen belts. They they make sure that they're protected from them. Um, but then, so as as I mentioned, the the these charged particles will um, stream in towards the Earth, um, towards the North Pole and the South Pole. And when they hit the um, the Earth's atmosphere, you have what are called the auroras. The auroras are just um, these lights that you 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 see in the night sky. Normally, you have to be in in really um, far northern or s far southern latitudes, so, so you know, close to the North Pole or close to the South Pole, um, but you don't normally see these. Um, certainly not from South Carolina. That that's a pretty rare thing um, to see these from South Carolina. You you might have seen them, but um, you have to have extreme like an extreme. Um, magnetic. Oh, sorry, an extreme storm um, on the on the surface of the sun, and, and you have the extra charged particles coming in and and hitting um, the 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 Earth's magnetic field uh, for for that to be seen as far south as South Carolina. Um, all right. Uh, no, normally, like if you're in you know um, Upper Canada or Alaska, um, it's pretty easy to see. The, the uh, auroras, or you know, like Norway or something like that. Um, all right, so uh, now, now we're going to turn to the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, the Earth is surrounded by this this wonderful uh, blanket, if you will. You can kind of think of it as a blanket. That's a, actually a good way to think about it. Um, it is. Uh, it, we're not the only planet, of course, to have an atmosphere. Mars has one. Uh, Venus has one. We'll get to those atmospheres a little bit later. Um, and and the, the, the atmosphere goes up, um, you know, hundreds of kilometers. Um, you know, it's, it's a good way to think about it. It's, it's roughly 100 miles to, to get to where space, where you'd be con considered space. All right. So um, there's the part that we live in is called the troposphere. All right, so, the, so that's that's and then above that is the stratosphere. There's actually other names. So every, every time here, let's so, so watch. If, if you have, if you're in the in the troposphere, um, as you go higher and higher, the temperature goes go goes um, down. Right, the temperature gets it gets colder and colder and colder. All right, but then when you get um, when you get into the stratosphere, something interesting happens. Um, where the the, uh, the the temperature um you know it starts to get warmer again right and that's that's in this region of the of the stratosphere a very important region called the ozone layer ozone is um it's you know what we breathe down here in the troposphere uh, is the o2 molecules two two oxygen atoms that are chemically bound together um Far above us in the stratosphere, in this region, it's called the, the you know the ozone layer. There's actually three oxygens that are 
bound together chemically. Um, and in that region, so, so you know, the, the, um, the, the temperature goes up, goes up, goes up. Um, one, I, I forget, you could look this up if you want, if you're really interested. Um, but the, there's a thing, I think it's called the mesosphere. And then, and then notice it, it only, only a certain, it only goes up to a certain temperature and then it starts to fall again. And then you get, um, you know, you, 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 then it also, then it starts to go up again. Um, uh, be, you know, because you're, you're at the, the upper parts of the atmosphere. Um, all right. So, so, so this is it, each of these turning points of, for the temperature is actually has a different name. All right. So, um, I forget which one is the mesosphere and the, oh man, there's, yeah, they, they have different names. Um, all right. So, so remember, this is a, this is a class on astronomy, not, not meteorology, but, uh, and notice the auroras are occurring way up in the upper, upper parts of the atmosphere where, you know, most, most of the, uh, you know, most of the atmosphere is well below that. All right. So this is a good, this is a good rule of thumb here. So, um, half the mass of the atmosphere is within four kilometers of, of the surface. Um, the Earth's atmosphere is primarily made of nit nitrogen, um, and it's it's not just a it's not just a single nitrogen atom. There's actually two nitrogens that are bound together. Um, that that's when we talk about nitrogen. That's you know you take a breath of air, you're breathing in a whole bunch of nitrogen. Um, you know, seventy six. I'm sorry, seventy eight percent is is what you know. About twenty one percent is the oxygen, and of course. That that's the O2 molecule that that is is necessary for um, you know pretty much anything but plants. Um, all right, uh, you know all animals of course need need oxygen. Um, the remaining gas uh, is roughly one percent. Uh, you're going to get carbon dioxide. Um, there's it's, you, you're getting a mixture of carbon dioxide, ozone, which remember is the O3 molecule, water. That now water um, water ver it varies the amount of water in the atmosphere certainly varies um, with time. There's also a little bit of argon in the atmosphere as well. Um, all right, so so those, those most as it says here, um, Mars and Venus have um, carbon dioxide atmospheres. Uh, Venus actually has a really thick atmosphere the plant the the outer planets tend to have a high mostly hydrogen in the atmosphere we'll get to that when we start talking about Jupiter and Saturn Uranus and Neptune all right so um let's turn to the greenhouse effect okay believe it or not I, you know you, you might you might think the greenhouse effect is just this terrible terrible thing um and it can be right it certainly but but <laughs> the Earth, if the, we didn't have the greenhouse effect, the Earth would be a lot colder than it is. Um, like we, we would like constantly be, oh, I forget the number. It's, it's like um, negative 20 uh, Fahrenheit or something like that. If, if we did not have, I mean, we'd have other problems if we didn't have an atmosphere, of course. But, um, you know, of course, we have an atmosphere and the atmosphere traps some of the radiation that comes to us from the sun. All right, so, so let, let me just explain how, a, let's see, does it show it? No, uh, a greenhouse. Okay, so how does a greenhouse work? Right. Um, or you, you see, here's a good example of the greenhouse effect. Uh, you know, you go out to your car on a hot summer's day, right? Um, and in the car's sitting in a, some parking lot that's that's, you know, not, it's not in the shade. It's sitting out there in the sunlight. And, you know, I'm sure you've all experienced this uh, in the middle of the summer. You open that car door and it's a lot hotter in the car than it is, um, you know, in the atmosphere. You know, and it could be like 95 degrees on a summer's day. The, but, but you step into that car and you're talking about like, you know, it, it can actually go up to like 130 
um, and even a little bit higher sometimes, depending on you know how how much how much uh, how many windows you have in the car. But but uh, see what's what's going on is visible light can pass through the through the windows of the car, and then the um, infrared. Let's see, where's it represented? So that that's that's represented by this the, the red the, these red squiggly lines. That's supposed to be the infrared light. Um, the infrared, like in a car, cannot pass does, does not easily let, let me put it that way. It does not easily pass through the light, right? In fact, that's why we that's how we use greenhouses, right? In in the middle of the winter. You can have a green, uh, you know, this this enclosure with with glass on it. It lets in the light, but it it the infrared light will bounce around. It doesn't it doesn't leave it doesn't leave so easily. Um, the, it doesn't pass through the glass very easily, and so the infrared light bounces around a little bit, a little bit more, you know, well a lot actually, um, in, in a greenhouse. All right, so so for, for the Earth, the greenhouse effect is is the, the the Earth's atmosphere, and there's two primary gases in the atmosphere that cause the greenhouse effect. One, of course, is well. Let me let me start with the most important one, um, water. Okay, uh, you know, you don't hear people talking about that very often, but water is is the is the one of the the, the strongest greenhouse gases. That there are when it, when it's water vapor, it blocks the infrared radiation from escaping back back in, in the space. But also carbon dioxide, right? So carbon dioxide does that. Now, what the thing about water is that there's a natural water cycle on the Earth, right? Where where the water builds up, it gets into the clouds, and eventually it rains, and so the water comes down from the atmosphere. Um, it doesn't exactly do that with the with carbon dioxide. Of course, plants use carbon dioxide, which is wonderful um, in in the photosynthesis in, in photosynthesis. But humans have been putting more and more. You know, every time we burn fossil fuel, coal, oil, natural gas, uh, we we one of the byproducts is carbon dioxide, and so if you if you, if you take a look at this, okay, so this is the this is the whole idea about global warming and climate change, right? So if you look, um, I mean, this is this is not unfortunately this has become political, and I don't know why, um, because this is indisputable evidence. Um, if you look back during during the, the, the time, even even before this, we have data on. Um, you know, uh, uh, pre-industrialization, right? So pre-industrialization, once once humans start to industrialize, um, the amount of carbon dioxide goes up, 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 up in the atmosphere, and and it, you know, notice in the in you know starting in the nineteen sixties, eighties, and two thousands, and it just keeps going up more and more and more, right? Um, and so the, the the natural processes, which are, is takes you know, plants and the ocean, even the, the algae in the ocean, takes some of the carbon dioxide away. But there's we're pumping so much carbon dioxide, humans are causing this thing called global warming over time. I mean, the the, the temperature of the planet Earth is increasing um, over time, and and that's going to cause all you know. We, we know what's going to happen. Um, now, now the Earth naturally goes through cycles, um, but but th this this is this is a human you know this is from the Industrial Revolution onward, um, and we know quite well that that's what's going on. Of course, you know I like to hop in my car and and you know drive to to different places and you know not use a horse. And buggy or something like that. I mean, the, the way people used to, um, and uh, you know, that's it's it's unfortunate because the the cars and and uh, well, car, cars are a huge source of of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere as well. Um, all right. So anyhow, the ozone layer um, 
is the, the, it actually uh, protects us in the O3 molecules, protect us from ultraviolet light. It wasn't always there.